Hi, just me, Jack. I'm just going to go through a few of the things that you need to know for this lecture. First of all, this is the Moodle site, and as I said before, we're going to be going through things through week one through to week 14, and I encourage you to have a look through that and understand some of the different exercises that we have to do. As I said, you will be having moments in the course where you'll have these accessible uh, assignments worth 25%. Each one of them you'll be given different details from Rosalie, Darren and myself. But what I would require you to do at each of these stages is to submit a uh, video onto YouTube showing your work and what you have done. So the software, as I explained before, is Maya and you can log in using your login details. Um, let me just pause this while I... Okay, so I've now logged in. And as I said before, once you've logged in, you'll click on the button saying free software. And when it loads up, you'll have a list of different softwares shown in the list below here. Pause this until it loads up. Here we go. Right, so you've got all the different things, and we need to go down until you see Autodesk Maya. There it is, Autodesk Maya, and download. Um, no, I don't really know which one I would suggest. I'm using 2014 here. Uh, you might hold off, download 2014. I think that that's always best to have the latest version. I've requested for TSD to download. The latest version so you do that so you go 2014 you select your language and you select whether you're on on windows or whether you're on your macintosh platform after that you'll be given a download link and a serial number and somewhere to download now i've already downloaded it once you've downloaded you just install it so you, you can either use the download now i recommend that you I prefer the browser download because I've got software to regulate and control the way things are downloading, but you can choose whatever works with you. If you've got a good internet connection, understand here it's two gigabytes, so be careful if you do have an internet um, threshold as to how much you can download, just be careful with that. So installing it, you'll be asked to in, in, enter your serial, card, serial number and product key, and you'd enter that in at the time. And so the next thing you'd want to do is start up Maya. So I've got Maya here, and this is what it looks like when it starts up. So you'll start up with this, this output window pops up. Don't worry about that. You can close that window down, and you'll start up with the splash window here. Okay, so this is the, generally what you'll see. I've got some different things popping up because of um, my installation, but you should have something somewhat like that popping up. You may not have the gray area that I've got in the middle, it might be a gradient, that's just again, that's another um, option that I've changed on my uh, particular installation of Maya. So the overall um, interface is, is quite complex, I won't say that it isn't. But the main things I want you to try and learn for this first lesson are just basic navigation skills. Now, the, I'm using a stylus, but you can do this with a, ma a mouse as well. Now, you use right mouse, left mouse, and middle mouse accordingly. Now, you've got several areas inside this workspace that we work with. Uh, the main one is in the center here, which is the it's a, a camera. This is a perspective camera. Um, which is something which has a, a sense of three-dimensional space and you can move around it. And the first thing that we need to understand and learn, the exercise that I want you to practice, is being able to move around in 3D space. Now, next to your space bar on your keyboard, you've got a button either to the right or to the left of your keyboard. That's the Alt button. If you hold down Alt and left mouse clicker on the screen, you'll be able to do a thing called tumbling. Now, tumbling allows you to move around something in space. So if I was to have, I'll just quickly create a surface in the middle of the space. As I hold down Alt and left mouse click, you move around. And you 
you'll see that this object here is what's called a wireframe. Uh, one of the first questions people ask is how do I make it look solid? Well, that's quite simple. You have to um, change it into shaded mode. And the three hotkeys you need to remember are three for wireframe. And you'll see it actually comes up with an option telling you what's going on. And four and five. So when you click five, it will give you your flat shaded mode. So I'll be able to uh, show what things look like and have a sense of the kind of form that you're working with. Now while I'm doing this, I'm also doing a couple of different movements which I want you to practice. First movement, as I said, is holding down Alt and left mouse click, which will tumble. If you Alt and middle mouse click, you can track to the side to side. And if you Alt and right mouse click, it allows you to approach and go away from an object. So I'm approaching an object and I'm going away from an object. So these are the first things I want you to be able to practice. So take some time, pause this video and create an object. You can create an object by clicking on these little shelves up here and you've got surfaces and you can click any of these objects. You can click say even a torus and it may ask you one of the options that when you have the things on default is they may have a thing called interactive creation. So you may be asked to do this when you click on it. Might, you might say, click and here we go let's do it again this thing here drag on grid so that might ask you to do it that way and that's fine that's just another way of creating an object the main thing i want you to focus on though at this stage of the game is understanding how to move around in space because if you can create a sphere that's already the major part of what i want you to do for this first lesson the second thing that we want to do in this lesson is to learn about how to move things. So as long as we're comfortable with moving things, rotating things, moving backwards and forwards, practice that skill, the three things, holding down Alt, left, middle mouse and right mouse button. Practice that. The next thing I'll draw your attention to is this thing across the bottom. Now I'm just left mouse clicking and dragging and we're going through time. At the moment we have a thing called a frame and it's the same in traditional animation where you have a single piece of paper here we have digital sheets of paper and each one of these represents a new sheet of paper as you move through you'll advance to a different frame and a different moment in time and all animation is based upon some state something changing over time so if we've got our ball in a particular position at a particular time animation is all about making this go somewhere else in time so this section here before, just as a quick brief overview, is what's called your timeline, and that's where animation occurs. Over here, we've got an uh, information bar giving descriptions of what's going on about what's been selected. I wouldn't worry too much about that. You'll have little vertical tabs here. One says attribute editor, and one says channel box. We're just gonna concentrate on the channel box for the moment, because what the channel box does is it gives us information about where things are in space. So we've created an object, we know how to move around and shuffle it around in front of our eyes. We know what time it is. Now we need to work out what it's actually doing. And the main thing we're going to be concerning ourselves with is how it moves. Now there's two ways that you can move things. One is you can use a thing up here called the move tool and a rotate tool and a scale tool. Each one of these are called manipulated and they can manipulate where something is. So for example here with the move tool selected I can move things in this direction. I can move things in that direction, or I can move them in that direction. So each of these directions, the, that one up and down, the green one is called the Y direction, up and down. The red one is X direction, which is side to side. And the blue one, which is Z direction, which is backwards and forwards. Choose your own up and down, backwards and forwards, or whatever. They are three discrete different dimensions, which makes up three dimensional space. Now what you'll notice here is as you move backwards and forwards in space and translate x, you'll notice that the value of translate x changes. And as I move it backwards and forwards in z, over here in your channel box, the, the values of z also change. The second manipulator I will show you is the rotate manipulator. And it may not appear exactly there, but there's a, if I move out a bit, sometimes you need to move in or out or you can press the plus and minus to make that larger or smaller. So if you're down here, you can press plus and that will make it a bit larger so you can see what's going on. And you'll notice that when I rotate, I'll click on one of those circles around the outside here, that rotates 
the circle and that rotates it here and you'll see as you watch those numbers over in the, on the, in the channel bar here as I rotate Y it rotates and the value of Y changes. If I click on the blue circle you'll see that the value of rotate Z also changes at the same time. And the red circle, okay, so if you can get your head around moving things um, either clicking the move tool or the rotate tool and the fact that there is some numerical corresponding value across here so I can type in values here so there I've moved it back to the center or if I wanted to have my object exactly one unit in X that moves it across so you can actually enter and, and get discrete values of things so with that in hand we can actually start to do some animation because if you can understand that this thing here the the um, channel bar and uh, the channel box allows you to specify a value it also allows you to set a keyframe so if I was in frame one we've looked at the timeline I can select the values of translation and one thing you can do is you can right, right mouse click and the very very top of the list is key selected and that's really good because it allows me to say at frame one my translations have a value of one of zero rather now this is where animation starts. We can go to a frame later on, say frame 24, and I can change the state. So if I move my ball across to say here, and then right click and say key selected again, I get a little red line. And what you have, voila, is animation. So as I change time, my object changes. And that's pretty much the whole of animation already explained to you as far as the machine is concerned. The rest of it is art. So we have to go into the middle, say halfway through, and say move it up, and then record that upwards position. So now I've got my ball moving up, and then my ball moving down. Okay, so with that, I don't want to teach you any more than that for the moment because I think that that's already enough. The only other thing that I want to teach you is to give yourself a little bit more time because 24 frames, 24 pictures is pretty quick, especially given that one second of animation is 24 frames. So what we get if I was to press play is that thing happening, let me have a look, see what my settings are, my settings set for real time, 24 frames per second, it's still pretty slow, but things are going to happen fairly quickly. Now if you want things to happen a bit more slowly or have a bit more time to think about what's going on, you can extend this time range. So I can say give yourself 120 set, 120 frames, which is 5 or so seconds. So now we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? And the longer you want the animation to last for, the more you would change this time line range. So I'm not going to teach you any more than that for the moment. You've got your way to move around in space. You know how to create your simple sphere. You know how to set an animation keyframe. And I want you to just use that and see if you can come up with a bouncing ball. And I want you to, when you've finished your bouncing ball, so say for example, I um, had my bouncing ball, which is 24 frames long. I'm not going to do anything longer than that for the moment. And then I want to create a quick animation of that. So the way that we output an animation in Maya is you choose an angle just by moving your, your camera around and you right click on the timeline and there's a thing in here saying play blast. And if you pull it across to the side here, there's an option and it allows you to choose where you'd like to save the, the film to. So I can go browse and I can put it to my desktop say, give it a name, call it ball save it as a movie file, click save, and now I'll click play blast. Now it's set for AVI, I can choose QuickTime as well, or image sequence, QuickTime, or AVI, I'll choose QuickTime actually, and click play blast. And what it does is it creates a quick video of that, and if it's QuickTime, it'll open up in QuickTime, there's a video there, and there's my QuickTime rendered ball. So what do you do with that? You now go into YouTube, If you haven't already got a YouTube account, sign up for one. I'm not going to cover how to create a YouTube account on this video, but I want you to 
then once you've signed up, you've got a button here saying upload. So you go upload and it will give you this video here. So you can then click here to select the file that you wanted to do. I've done my ball, click on ball and it will start to upload it. Ball, and so this is week one. Now, don't just do what I've done. I want you to also look at references of balls, look at the way things move, look at the way things bounce and see what you can do to try and make it look as much like a ball as possible. You see my thing is now being uploaded. I can now click on the link. Okay, so there's my animation. And what I'd want you to do is to select that link, copy that link there, and then email it to me. And that's enough for today. All right, so if you have any questions about that, my email address, as I said before, is harry jack at gmail.com all right email me if you've got if you've got any questions or problems um, I don't want to give you exact instructions I want you to be creative and see what you can come up with so I'll see you all next Monday